Hello friends, you're welcome to the Search the Scriptures lesson. Remember, we are still on the series on the book of Leviticus. It's a refreshing time, a time where we flip the pages of the scriptures, a time where we get blessed, edified by the Spirit of God via the scripture. Lord, we pray that you will breathe upon your word. And um, if you're just joining, and um, this is the first time coming across this video we go through the scriptures it's called the search the scriptures from chapters to chapters and um, the lord has been blessing us and also please click on the like button if this has been helpful if this videos have been blessing you click on the like button um, it will do good to help others um, get to know about what God has been doing through those videos. Also, click, click. God bless you. Let's say a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for your goodness, for your love, for your kindness. We thank you because you had us in mind from creation, from the beginning of the foundation of this earth. Lord, we are about to see your word. We are about to study. Lord, we pray that you open the eyes of our understanding. That we see wonderful things, precious things, wondrous things out of your word. Speak to us. Teach us. Guide us into all truth. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Once again, you're welcome to the search, the scriptures um, study. And we are looking at Leviticus chapter 16. The last episode, we looked at um, the identification and cleansing of leprosy. And in this study, we are looking at the Day of Atonement. Now, let's see Leviticus chapter 16, verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat, which is upon the ark, that he die not. For I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a young bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and shall be gathered with a linen girdle and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments. Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. The text for this lesson opens with a solemn reminder of the tragic and untimely death of the two sons of Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, for offering strange fire before the Lord. Obviously, the wages of sin is death. The penalty of sin can be averted through God's gracious provision for atonement, which is the subject of the present lesson. Atonement became necessary because of the fall of man. When Adam and Eve sinned, our first parents, they became guilty and estranged from God. Going by God's holiness and justice man should be punished for his sins but attributes of mercy grace and kindness has moved him to restore his relationship with man through the medium of atonement this involved the transfer of the sinner's guilt upon an acceptable substitute who can bear the lawful punishment for man's sin. The sin of the entire nation were adorned for true the shedding of the blood of prescribed animals. 
The tabernacle was also purified from the defilement of sin. And for the next one year, the whole nation of Israel obtained a new lease of life in their walk with God. Today, the Lord Jesus Christ is our substitute. And with his blood, he has atoned for all the sins of all. Once and for all. God bless you. Let's come to the points. The study is divided into three points. The topic, the day of atonement. Three points. Point number one, precautions for the priests in the service of God. Precautions for the priests in the service of God. Remember what happened to Nadab and Abihu. So there were precautions. Point number two, procedures and purpose of the service of atonement. Point number three, pertinent lessons from the service of atonement. Now let's come to point number one, precautions for the priest in the service of God. In our text in Leviticus chapter 16, and I read from verse 1, And the Lord speak unto Moses, after the death of the two sons of Aaron, when they offered before the Lord and died. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not, for I will appear in the cloud upon the mercy seat. Reference to the deaths of the two sons of Aaron in the text was not just a mere historical excursion, but a solemn warning to present day believers who are also referred to as priests in the New Testament. Remember, we are called priests and kings. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, and also Revelation chapter 5, verse 10. Aaron's two sons died as the result of their sacrilegious acts. And their death reveals and confirms the justice of God. Though he does not delight in judgment, he judges sin so that others can turn from their evil ways and live righteously. He gave them instructions like he has given us, but they did otherwise. It is only God's way and on his own terms that man's sin can be dead. Unwilling that any should perish, he says, but all should come to repentance. He revealed his own way of pardon through atonement, his own way, not yours not the society, not the church, his own way. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That is why the world needs Christ. He came and he gave himself for us. So the precaution given to the Levitical priest Aaron and his sons was in verse 2. And the Lord said unto Moses, Speak unto Aaron thy brother, that he come not at all times into the holy place within the veil before the mercy seat which is upon the ark, that he die not. The Lord said to Moses, Tell thy brother, your brother Aaron, that he come not at all times into the holies of holies. He being the high priest does not guarantee familiarity. He being the high priest does not um, give him that access to always appear before me at all times. I will choose a specific time he would come. And the Lord chose that time that Aaron, the high priest, would come and offer for himself and for the people before the Lord, not all the time. And he said to him, he said, you will come. This is the instruction. 
if Aaron had violated or gone against the command or the instruction of God, he would have died. God is no respect of man. He says that he died not. That he died not. The Lord gave him all the instruction and Aaron kept the law, the instructions of God. The Lord said it should be in a particular time, the seventh month, the tenth day of the seventh month, annually. And Aaron kept, stood to the instruction of God. Now let's come to verse 3. Thus shall Aaron come into the holy place with a bullock for a sin offering and a ram for a burnt offering. Now we are moving to the second point. Point number two, procedures and purpose of the service of atonement. It has procedures and also the purpose, the reason of the service of atonement. Now come to Leviticus chapter 16 verse 4. He shall put on the holy linen coat and he shall have the linen breeches upon his flesh and he shall be gathered with a linen girdle and with the linen mitre shall he be attired. These are holy garments Therefore shall he wash his flesh in water and so put them on. And he shall take of the congregation of the children of Israel two kids of the goats for a sin offering and one ram for a bond offering. On the first episode of this Levitical series, we looked at various sacrifices. And some of those sacrifices were offered on a daily basis. But um, the sacrifice we're looking at for um, the Day of Atonement was a very remarkable and a special um, sacrifice. It's very special. And um, the daily sacrifice is somewhat different from the special sacrifice, which was offered on a particular day, the seventh month and the tenth the tenth day of the seventh month of every year. And let's look at um, the slight differences. On the day of atonement, the high priest alone officiated in the sanctuary. And for most of the time, he had to put off his distinguished robe of glory and honor, being clad only in pure white linen garments like the ordinary priests. Yes, special offerings were also made in addition to the normal daily sacrifices. The special sacrifices, special, you understand what I mean by special. The special sacrifices include a young bullock for a sin offering for, for Aaron and his family, while two goats for a sin offering for the people of Israel and a ram for a burnt offering for Aaron and his family and a ram for a burnt offering for the children of Israel. So you know on this special day, the special sacrifices, Aaron would come with a bullock and a ram while the children of Israel would offer two goats, kids, two goats and what? A ram. Yes. Now, this service on the Day of Atonement took several stages. One, Aaron, the high priest, had to bath himself in water and put on the special sacred linen garments. Two, he presented the sacrificial animals before the Lord at the door of the tabernacle. He offered it like, Lord, this is it. At the door of the tabernacle. Three, he cast lot on two goats of the sin offering for the people so as to determine which one to kill and which one to send away into the wilderness as a scapegoat. Yes, the 
the priest would cast lots uh, to know which should be killed and which should be led away as a scapegoat into um, the wilderness. For the sin offering were made. Then Aaron killed the young bullock for his own sin offering and collect the blood. Then he entered into the Holy of Holies, taking in one hand a censer full of live coals, which he had taken from the brazen altar. That should not be mistaken. Aaron would um, collect the fire from the brazen altar and in the other hand sweet incense beaten small. As soon as he entered into the holies of holies, Aaron would pour the incense upon the life coals in order to produce um, a cloud of sweet incense which covered the mercy seats. In this way, Aaron would not look directly on the mercy seat. Next, he would go out. He would go out, leaving the holiest of holies. He would go out and bring in the blood of the slain bull into the most holy place. Remember, he killed the bull. He collected the blood for himself and for his family. He would first go in to offer for himself. Then he would come and also go in again to offer for the children of Israel. Aaron made an atonement for the holy place by staining the horns of the golden altar seven times with the blood of the bull and of the goat. The remaining blood he poured at the base of the brazen altar in order to make atonement for the outer court of the tabernacle. Take note. The scapegoat was taken and Aaron laid both his hands upon his head, confessing over it all the sins of the children of Israel. Then the scapegoat, bearing upon it the sins of the people, was sent away to the wilderness. We are going to look at um, all this. Remember, these are typology of Christ. All he did for us. So seven, the next stage involved the sacrificing of the burnt offering. For this, Aaron went into the holy place and um, remove the linen garment, the white, pure white garment, in which he ministered, bath himself, and put on his priest's what robe before coming out into the outer court to kill the burnt offering. He offered a ram as a burnt offering for himself and his family, and the ram of burnt offering for the people of Israel. Why Aaron made atonement for the people, God commanded that the entire children of Israel maintain an attitude of penitence and sobriety. Now come to verse 26. And this shall be a statue forever unto you, that in the seventh month, on the tenth day of of the month ye shall afflict your souls and do no work at all whether it be one of your own country or a stranger that sojourneth among you for on that day shall the priest make an atonement for you to cleanse you that ye may be clean from all your sins before the lord it shall be a sabbath of rest for you and ye shall afflict your souls by a statue forever now let's come to the third point point number three pertinent lessons from the service of atonement now let's look at leviticus leviticus chapter 16 our text and i read from verse 21 and aaron shall lay both his hands upon the head of the live goat and confess over him all the iniquities of the children of Israel and all their transgressions in all their sins, putting them upon the head of the goat, and shall send him away 
by the hand of a fit man into the wilderness. Now let's look at the word atonement. The word atonement appears in the New Testament once. In Romans chapter 5 verse 11, And not only so, but we also joy in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom we have now received the atonement. Atonement literally means uh, repair, done, to restore damaged relationship. Man's relationship with God was damaged when he fell into sin in the Garden of Eden. In Genesis chapter 3, when man fell, Adam, God at the incidence of this breach promised an atonement by Christ, who he called the seed of the woman. Remember he said in Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between the seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. The Old Testament institution of the Day of Atonement owes its original as a temporal representation of the promised atonement by Christ, that is, the seed of the women. In other words, atonement means reconciliation of God and mankind through the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. For reconciliation or atonement and remission to be possible, God had to make a way of escape from sin by providing a substitute. He provided a substitute. The scripture says, and almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood is no remission. You know, all these were pointing to Christ, what Christ did on the cross of Calvary. Uh, when we look at the goats, the two goats, um, one was slain and the other um, Aaron laid his hands and was led into the wilderness. Is the scapegoat. And we, we can see these um, replicated in the life of Christ. What he did on, on the cross of Calvary. How he gave himself for us. And you know, he bore the sins of the world. In Isaiah chapter 53 verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. The Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. You know, like Aaron placed his hands, confessed all the sins of the people. Um, it's... it's it was a transfer, it was an impactation of the sin and the iniquity of the people, the nation, on the scapegoats. And that was what Christ did for us. He bore our sins, he took our sins, it was laid on him. He offered himself. The priests offered the sacrifices, they offered the animals, but Jesus did what? He offered himself for our sins. He was the high priest and also the animal. He was the slain goat and also the scapegoat. And he was, he, he, he suffered for us. He died and he resurrected and he leaves. The same way the scapegoat leaves while the other died. And the question is, like the Bible says, the animal was taken outside the camp. Even after the other animal was slain, the, the, the animal would be taken off the camp to be burned. 
and that is also like christ when he was offered he was offered outside the city the bible used in the old testament camp without the camp because they were living in tents they were living in tents so it was called a camp but when they had moved to the land of canaan the promised land um, the bible says in hebrews chapter 13 verse 11 for the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp wherefore jesus also that he might sanctify the people with his own blood suffered without the gates now we've gained access to enter through the blood of jesus we now we go by a new and a living way and the question is after you've heard all these, what Christ has done for us, we don't kill animals, we don't sacrifice animals anymore. He went into the holies of holies, not a sanctuary, not a tabernacle made with hands. He went to offer himself to the Lord. He gave his blood to make an atonement for us to redeem us to the father and this time he has made it he gave himself for the world the goats the sacrifice made by Aaron the high priest was for the nation of Israel for Jesus came for us he came for the world he offered himself to redeem you and i to the father and he resurrected on the third day for our justification for your justification for my justification and the Lord wants us to come. Come boldly. Come. He has given himself. He has made an atonement for our sins. But for only those that come believing. The Lord gave the people an instruction. And he said you gather around the sanctuary. And you will afflict your souls. You will mourn, you will examine yourselves. And open your hearts in acceptance of the sacrifice made. And that is how it is today. Christ gave himself for us. And the question is, have you accepted? Do you believe? Do you believe that he paid it all? Yes, if you believe that you accepted him into your heart. Have you allowed him to wash you, purge you, purify you, make you clean again? From every sinful dead works of darkness. I pray the Lord will do it as you open up your heart. He will not cast you away come come and he will wash you let's say a word of prayer father we thank you for your word for what you have done to redeem mankind to redeem us to bring us in to the fold Lord, we thank you for your word, for the sacrifice also on the cross. We could not save and still we cannot save ourselves. 
and we are holding on to this promise. You died for our sins. You died to redeem us. And you resurrected on the third day for our justification. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, I believe. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Lord, we ask for the grace to remain, the grace to hold on, the grace to endure, even till the end. You grant to us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you've done it. You've heard us. But this is the confidence we have. And when we ask anything according to your will, you hear it us. May your grace abide in us, with us, and for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.